Uh, so we look at the second aspect of the proof. That's showing that this one is, um, even though it is strictly in prison, it, it won't exceed three. All right, so we have the other aspects. And that means um, this particular sequence, one plus one over n to the power n, then if it is increasing but it's not exceeding three, it means it is bounded. Okay, so it's bounded above by 3. It's bounded above by 3. So let's, let's pick this. So we have this equals 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so we going to expand this using binomial uh, theorem or expansion. Uh, so by binomial expansion, we realize that this place gives us 1, then plus n, then we have 1 over n. Then all divided by 1 factorial, then plus n, then we have n minus 1 um, over 2 factorial, and uh, we have 1 over n squared, and then this gives us n, n minus 1, n minus 2, um, 3 factorial, and that to be multiplied by, so here the power is. Um, so we now have that being multiplied by um, 1 over a uh, power 3 and um, this will actually continue okay so until we have n 1 over n uh, something like this and uh, that's the last time right, so we what we just done is just to expand this using binomial uh, expansion of a theory. Good. Then, you see, when it is bounded um, above by 3, it means that we are trying to show that 1 plus 1 over n, as we have it here, is actually going to be less than or equal to 3. So, this is what we are driving at that this should be less than or equal to 3. For us to say that it is bounded um, above by 3, that means it's not a ceiling term. Right. So to achieve that, you see here we have equality sign. So we need to find a way of introducing this inequality sign for us to be on course. Right. So now we have this. So we want to introduce the inequality sign. But we can just write the same thing and say that it is less than, uh, this is less than or equal to it. Alright, so what we do is that we still maintain the first term, then plus. Now, <coughs> we want to reduce the numerators, and uh, so that in reducing this, so we do away with all this and say that it is 1. So we are changing all the numerators to 1. Alright, what we have done, uh, just changing all the numerators to 1 will make these aspects to be odd, less than what we have there. So we have 1 here, and divided by, so we have 1 factorial, then we have plus, so this one to becomes 1 by 2 factorial, then we have 1 over 3 factorial, and 1 over 4 factorial, and, and you see, this one continues until we have 1 over k factorial, then maybe plus 1 over n factorial. So we just continue with that. Right. So we still want to reduce it or write it in a different form. So what we have here is um, still going to be less than or equal to uh, saying that we have 1 plus. So it becomes 1 over, so 1 factorial, we can we realize that this will give us 1. So we write it at, as uh, 2 raised to the power 0. And um, then plus, so 2 power 0, then the next one becomes 1 over 2 power. All that we're trying to do is to see if we can create a certain uh, sequence out of this. So we create the sequence out of it and uh, see how best we can do that. So, we want it to follow a certain pattern. So here 2 to the power 0, here 1, then plus, we have 1, then 2 power 2, 
and 1 uh, 2 power 3, 1 2 power 4, and so it, it continues in that time. Alright, so simplifying this, we have this one to be the same as we have one, then plus, so this, are, this will give us one, so we have one here. We have one, then plus, this produces um, half. So we have half, and this will give us one fourth, um, one eighth, one eighth, and um, this one will give us um, one sixteenth, and it continues. Now as it is here, uh, because we are added, it comes um, 6. So we can get the sequence out of this 1. So 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and it continues. Now, what we want to do now is to hide the first thing. So we are hiding this one, for instance. So we hide this and see whether there is a certain relationship between the terms here. So when we look at this particular term and this term, as we they have anything in common, then this term and that term and see now which type of uh, progression we are having. So that it is progressive. We have arithmetic uh, progression and uh, the geometric progression here. This particular one realize that it's going to be geometric. And uh, because it's geometric, it's going to have a common ratio to be half. Because when we take this and we divide by this, we get half. So one fourth divided by half gives us half. One eighth divided by one fourth produces half. So there's a common ratio of uh, one over two or half. So we are picking all these aspects. So for this aspect going, we realize that we have a common ratio of half. And this becomes the first term, so this is the first term, our uh, A is 1. And okay, then, rather than at this point, it was sum. You see, we are adding all of them, but we reduce it to the sequence in this. So all we're trying to do is to find the sum of all this. If we get the sum from here up to infinity, then we can add it to 1 and see what we are getting. So from here going here, we find sum to infinity. All right, so I hope you've been able to recall the formula for finding sum to infinity for progress, uh, the geometric progression. Um, sum to infinity okay, is given by A over 1 minus R. Okay, so A over 1 minus R. So but our A here is 1. And, um, our r is half, so minus half is given as 1 over 1 over 2, which gives us all 2. Okay, so this 2 here should be added to the 1, because at this point it was addition, we added everything. So realize that we have 1 plus 2, which is given as 3. Okay, so if we pick it from here, what we said this is going to be less than or equal to this and all this is equal to that, then it is appropriate that we say that the sequence 1 plus 1 over n um, raised to the power n is less than or equal to 3. Now this tells us that um, even though in the first proof where we showed that it was strictly increasing by this relation um, greater than this here, it was strictly increasing, it does increasing, but here we've shown that even though it's increasing, it can't exceed 3. Okay. It means that it is bounded above by 3. Now, the only number that we have, as far as we're concerned, which is increasing, that's beyond 2 going, but not exceeding 3, is the real number E. Okay. So the real number E is the only number that has that characteristic. Uh, that it is greater than, or it is 2.71, uh, and it is increasing. It's more than 2, it's boom, but it's not a second trick, right? which is what we have proven here. So it's appropriate that we conclude that, okay, so based on the fact that we've shown that this is increasing strictly, 
and it is also bounded above by this. Then we can conclude confidently that the given sequence, which is this, the limit of it, 1 plus 1 over n, as n approaches infinity, is actually equal to a certain real number e. Alright, so yeah, so this is our proof, and um, it's not complicated. You take your time and go through it to see that it is it is quite interesting. Alright, uh, this is where we will end today's um, lesson. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, we shall meet again to look at more interesting issues as far as the course introductory analysis is concerned. Thank you very much.